I'm a business owner in the construction industry. A year ago, we had someone trial with us with a disability. We had to let him go to the fact that we just simply didn't have enough resources to put to be taken up. I still feel guilty about letting him go. People with disabilities have really good qualities, but due to the financial ramifications of the extra resources, we just couldn't make it work. My question is, what, if any, incentives are there financially to employ people with disability, and does not more need to be done in this area? Mate, thanks so much for your question. Thanks for being honest as well about what happened, first and foremost. I really appreciate that. Look, man, I've got three things that I want to achieve as Australian of the Year, um, you know, to try and better the, the, the life of people with disability. First and foremost, it is to have a fully funded, guaranteed, but most importantly, demand-driven NDIS. So people with disability can get what they need so they can go out and be the people they want to be. I'd love both sides of Parliament to guarantee that before the election because people forget it's actually an investment in people with disabilities, so they can get the resources, Josh, so they can get out there and live their lives. Um, you know, for every dollar spent on the NDIS, $2.25 goes back into the economy, like at your workplace, for example. $52 billion um, was generated last year because of the NDIS. Like, it's a no-brainer to me. But unfortunately, so pop, people talk about the fact that it is expensive, and that makes it hard for us. And it's, it's not so I can buy a nice... People can buy a nice car. It's so people with disability can have a shower every morning. Mm. So young kids with disability, high-level disabilities, don't have, to, don't have to live in in nursing homes or aged care facilities, you know? And that breaks my heart when I hear things like that, and it's important. And the NDIS actually helps get people the skills so they can get out there and work better for people like you. Secondly, as we start opening up, um, and, you know, I'm so excited that we are opening for, up for this, but for people with disability to be able to go out and get a job, they've got to get the PPE and the free rat tests and the vaccine so they are protected so they can get out there and start being the people they want to be. But more important than that, there are people that are currently at home who won't go outside because they might die. Mm. Yeah. Like, people are dying. And that... Look, I get a... It, when I get told they're going to get two rat tests for their family a week, it's like, get them whatever they need so they can do what they want to do. It's not hard, yeah? You would agree with that. Yeah. I think everybody yeah. would agree with that, you know? And thirdly, as you're talking about, which is something that I've been passionate about for a while, mate, is more employment opportunities for, yeah. for people with disabilities. Josh, let me come back to you. So, what would have helped in that situation? I mean, I get you're busy and everyone's flat out and you'd like to, to help this, this new guy. Yeah, so, in our case, it would have taken probably two people to help get them going and train them up. So, probably some financial incentive up front without having to wait four to six months for incentives to come through. Right, so some money to come through so you could um, hire, take on two so more people. So, that would go, come in for us, go directly to someone else's wage. Yeah. yeah. Like, straight look, up. And that's the whole... Look, the... There's four and a half million people, like me, Joshua, with a disability in this country. Only 54% of them are involved in the workforce, right? Yeah. I'm 31 years old. That participation rate has not moved in 31 years. I yeah. think if we want to improve the quality of life for people with disability, employment would be a huge factor. But also, it's not just the fact that the quality of life, not just for the remuneration, but how good's having a job? You've got yeah. mates, yeah? You get out, yeah. you get fit, you start living your life. I'm so lucky that I've got a job. Right? And, and I employ people with disabilities and that. But it can be easily fixed, man. There's a bunch of things we can do. And you know what? Already doing things with, with government and, and already talked to Tanya and both sides of Parliament are trying to help this thing, but it's easy. First and for foremost, government, corporates and, most importantly, C-suite and managers have got to leave their unconscious bias at the door, yeah. like you did, and give people with disability a chance. But there's got to be more funding streams so you can get the support that you need. Things like quotas work really well. Things like training programs. And I think... Look, there is a new national disability strategy that's about to come out, and um, there's a big, big part of this, right? Because people with disability as well, we often just give, give them a job at the front or whatever that is, right? And we, we love that. But why can't we have a career? Mm. Sure. Why can't we talk about this stuff at school? You know, and I think it's really important. And I, you talking about it changes that for people.